Okay, here's a mid 60s Philco AM clock radio that that uses vacuum tubes. This thing's kind of beat up and dirty. Actually, it was much dirtier when I got it, but I cleaned it up a little bit. I picked this up at a flea market for very little, so really the only major physical damage is the that right there, the ventilation slats on the back, a few of them are broken out, but who's going to be looking at the back of it anyway? Okay, I'll turn this on and demonstrate what it does. Takes it a, about 30 seconds to warm up since this is a vacuum tube radio. They don't come on instantly like the transistor sets do. Okay, as you can hear, you, uh, there is a couple of stations coming through, but there's also a, a huge amount of filter capacitor hum, which is common on these old radios. When the original electrolytic filter capacitors in the power supply dry out and no longer function, that's what you get. So I will open this up and show you the inside of it and show you what I'm going to do to fix it. Okay, here's the inside of the Philco clock radio. And this is the item that I'm interested in, this orange cardboard tube electrolytic filter capacitor that's in the power supply. This this device actually contains two capacitors in a single tube, a 50 microfarad and a 30 microfarad at 150 volts. And we're going to replace it with two individual sections, or two individual capacitors. And I'm also going to replace this capacitor, a .068 microfarad at 400 volts. It's wired across the AC line and that should also be replaced. I've seen a good many of those that were blown completely apart, so I'm going to replace that while I'm in here. Okay, let me do this and I will show you the finished product in just a few minutes. Oh, and by the way, here's the underside of the printed circuit board, and it appears the only thing holding this loop stick antenna is, is these two pieces of tape here. So, obviously a very cheap radio, but still I plan to get it going. So, okay, hang on and you'll see the finished product in a second. Okay, a couple other things that need to be mentioned before I show you the completed project here. Like I said before, this is the original two-section electrolytic capacitor. And if you'll notice on here, I don't know how well this is going to focus, but 50 microfarad, 150 volt corresponds to number one, terminal number one. 30 microfarad, 150 volts corresponds to uh, terminal number two. And the common negative lead uh, corresponds to terminal number three. Now these electrolytic capacitors are polarity sensitive. And it's very important that you wire these in correctly, otherwise you'll have a bit of a 4th of July and you will probably damage some other parts of the radio. So here's our new capacitors. And the uh, negative terminal on these is indicated by this band right here with an arrow on it. This is our 47 microfarad, 160 volt, which will replace the original 50 microfarad at 150 volt and here's a 33 microfarad at 160 volt which will replace the original 30 microfarad at 150 volt on the microfarad value it's it's perfectly okay you know to go a little bit above or a tad bit below it's not going to make any difference 
and the replacement capacitor should have a working voltage of at least the same working voltage as the original capacitor. So the original was 150 volts, so it's perfectly okay to use 160 volts. And what we're going to do, we're going to tie the uh, the two negative leads together of our replacement caps, which I will demonstrate here in just a second. Okay, here are our two negative leads connected together and soldered, and we're ready to put this in the mount this onto the circuit board. It's very important when you remove the old capacitor, you take note of which holes on the printed circuit board correspond to uh, which terminals. So in, in this case, this terminal corresponds to our negative lead, number three. This terminal corresponds to our 50 microfarad section, which is number one. And this terminal corresponds to our 30 microfarad section, which is terminal number two on the original capacitor. So now I will install our new capacitor onto the circuit. Okay, here's the chassis with the new capacitors installed. And before somebody gets on me about something, this is the uh, capacitor that was across the AC line. And technically that should be replaced with a with a modern safety capacitor, an across the line safety capacitor that's designed for that purpose. But unfortunately I don't I'm out of those type of capacitors, so I just installed a regular mylar capacitor which is still safer and more reliable than what was originally in here. And this radio is not going to be plugged in on a regular basis anyway, so it, you know, I'm not too concerned about it. Okay, I'm fixing to put it back together and we'll run a little test on it and see how it does. Okay, here it is. Back working again. When we end up chained to our desk to be productive, but you don't need to be. All you need is go to three eighteen ninety one or six nine three ten ten of the numbers to call to be a part of the program, and we certainly want to hear from you. Uh, well, Mark, we somebody we, on hold here. Oh, we do. Yeah. Oh, we do. Let's go to the phones. Hello, you're on the afternoon show. Welcome. What's going on, Al? What's happening? This is Josh. Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. Hey, Z, have you been on hold this all this time? I, I, I was for a while listening to the whole uh, Tisba conversation. It was interesting. Well, I'm glad you're a part of uh, this conversation, too, and thank you for being patient with us. So mm -hmm. we... Okay, there you go, the 1964 Philco clock radio. I still need to clean the chassis up and fix the alarm clock. It's it's dysfunctional, so I'm sure all it needs is some lubrication, but there you go. You get the idea of, of how these capacitors are replaced now, and stay tuned for more videos. Uh, I'll be posting some more later.